How am I? Welcome back to my channel. It has been a long time since I made a new video. So it's been um, busy. There's a lot going on. Actually, I've been focusing a lot on my TikTok channel, TikTok Paiute, where I teach Paiute and a lot more shorter, condensed um, lessons. But I wanted to make a video kind of going back to the basics, um, starting with a pronunciation guide. And actually, I wanted to start going through what you see here. This is the Urington Paiute language grammar. This has been around since I think 1987. Up to this point, all my videos, all my previous videos, I've just been using many, 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 many multiple resources and I've just been creating my own lessons. Whereas here, I wanna go through the lessons they've created already in this grammar. But I will be trying to maybe add a little bit to it. Also, don't let the Urington Paiute band discourage you if you're from a different band because I will try my best to um, incorporate other dialects showing differences and, um, and yeah in pronunciations and whatnot so we'll see how it goes but just to give you an idea of where the Urington Paiute tribe is it is right there as you can see in this map if I were to zoom in this is their historic territory as you can see they're highlighted in that kind of neon or whatever color that is called. And it is actually right by where my band, the Walker River Paiute Band, as you can see there, there's Shurs on the top little circle and then our Walker Lake down below us. So this dialect is very, very, very similar, if not identical to my own from Walker River. And so that's why I chose this, um, this language grammar to use because it is close to my own. But again, I will try my best to show how it is related to other dialects. So here are the main consonants in this dialect. As you can see, there are some doubled consonants. What exactly are those? Well, I'll come back to this, um, this picture, this image later on, but let's focus a bit on these single and double consonants to learn more about them, okay? Starting off, first off, actually, the single, the single consonants, you can call these lenis and the doubled fortis. And without getting full blown, blown into what these means, I'll just keep it very, very simple. The lenis indicates more of a soft articulation, whereas the fortis indicates a harder or a stronger articulation. So let's look more closely at some specific examples. But first, the other dialects, some other dialects, what you see there in the parentheses, that's the sound that other dialects would use. So a double B would be a P, double D would be a T, double G would be a K. Okay, now let's look at some specific examples, starting off with the single D versus the double D, okay? The single D is can be heard in this word, ara, ara, which means crow, ara. Notice it's very quick, almost like a flop of your tongue, de, de, de. like in the, in the word yada, 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 or that phrase, if someone's talking so much, yada, 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 that D is very quick and short, de, ara. Ara, compared to this double D sound in this word for winnowing basket, which is yada, yada. Notice it's harder, it's more forceful, okay, yada. Other dialects pronounce it like this, yada, yada, with a T. The B sound now, the B single as in the word tuba, tuba, for pine nut. Now you can pronounce it like an English T, tuba, but oftentimes, especially when spoken faster, it can come across as what's known as a fricative. What is a fricative? Well, think of the letter V or the sound V. V. What are you doing when you're pr producing that sound? You're bringing your top teeth in contact with your lower lip and you're just blowing air. There's a constant steady stream of air blowing along with your vocal cords making a noise. Well, the B can also be pronounced like that, but instead of your teeth making contact with your bottom lip, just make both lips come into contact like you're going to make a B sound, but do that same steady flow of air. And that is what this sound can make at times. 
That's why sometimes it is written like so, duva, in certain, certain people, certain dialects, they'll spell it like that. Or the word for song, hubia, some people spell it with a V because it has very softer fricative-like sound or like a V. Compared with the double B, however, the double B is hard. Duba. Duba means mouth. So compare the two, duba, duba versus duba, duba. In other dialects, it is a P sound and a T for the double D. Duba, duba. Single G versus double G. Again, the single G is more softer. Agai, agai. And just like the fricative in the B sound, the G can be pronounced in the same way. What you do is you put, put your tongue in the position as if you're going to make the G, G, G sound. But then do the same thing. Kind of bring the two, the, your tongue with the roof of your mouth in contact, but then have a steady stream flowing. G, G, G. Agai, 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 agai. When speaking fast, it can be like that. Agai, agai, agai. Versus the double G, which is hard. Full closer, closure of the air, then released. Bugu, bugu, gu, gu, bugu. In other dialects, this is buku, buku. All right, now that you know or you're familiar with the difference between the singular consonant and the double consonant, let's look at all of these to learn the sounds of this dialect, okay? Again, we already saw B, duba, for pine nut, and the double B, duba, for mouth. Same with ara, for crow, the double D, noda, noda, for B. Other dialects, that would be nota, nota. The double DS, ma'uidzogo, ma'uidzogo, means wrist. Single G for agai, meaning trout, and the double G, bugu, horse. Single GW, again, it's softer, sagwatni, sagwatni, meaning a little bit, versus the double G, W, yeah, double GW is togogwa, togogwa, it's harder, gwa. H, huna, Huna in badger. The K sound in the word saki, saki for tuli boat. That K sound actually can be pronounced in different ways also depending on the word environment in which it is produced. As I explained in one of my TikTok videos, the word environment refers to what sounds and stress patterns are surrounding a particular sound. In this case, the K sound, when it is followed by an E, it's pronounced kind of like the English K in the word key, saki, saki. But if it's following or surrounded by an O and an A, O, O, A, A, it's pronounced a, like a uvular stop. So it's pronounced further back in your throat. Ka, 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 or ko, ko, ko. The KW, kuitna, kuitna, is the word eagle. The singular M, is just a M sound, but kind of quick. Numa, numa, numa. Versus the double M in the word jackrabbit, it's lengthened. Gum, gum. It's kind of harder pronunci pronunciation. Same with the singular N, wherever they're on the top right. In the word for the word for root is duna, duna. Versus duna, duna. Antelope. Notice the pronunciation changes and the meaning changes. That's important. NG, singular, is bungatsi, bungatsi, for mouse. But it's a bit lengthened in the word wangi, wangi, fox. The P, koipa, koipa, bighorn sheep. S, sugu, sugu, robin. That S can also change sounds depending on if it follows an E sound. Then it becomes more like an SH, sh, sh. We'll see an example shortly. The T is just like the English T. Uh, there's a, a typo there. The example should be T A B A, taba, taba, meaning sun. T S, hutsiba, hutsiba, means bird. T Z, very similar, especially when speaking fast. 
to TS. It's Atsabana, Atsabana, woodpecker. W, Sawabi, Sawabi, sagebrush. Y, Yada, Yada, wintering basket. Z, Kuzu, Kuzu means pygmy rabbit. Now, there are some who would argue, such as the late Harold Miller, who was an elder from Walker River, that there is no Z sound in the Paiute language. Rather, you just have a TS or a DS or DZ, TZ. But sometimes, again, like the Lennis, it becomes so soft that it almost you lose that T or the D sound. And so it can just sound like a Z. Keep that in mind. And finally, that last little letter that looks like an apostrophe represents a glottal stop. A glottal stop is basically when you, you stop the flow of air at your glottis and then you release it. Such as in the word for hummingbird, songoi i, songoi i. Between those two e's is where that glottal stop occurs, songoi i. Those are the consonants, very simple. Now look, let's look at the vowels. Okay, you notice that there is a short vowel and a long vowel. And the vowels are very easy. The A is like the A in father. The example is the word for antler, ah, ah. The E is the E sound, like in beat. The example is isha, isha, meaning wolf. And there is that S sound. Following an E becomes a sh, isha, isha. The O is like the O in home. The example is the word for bone, oho, oho. The double O is the U sound. U, like in boot. The example is kutsu. Kutsu, which means cow. And then the U sound. This one is different. Notice what they have written here. It is a sound not found or not like any in the English language. It's pronounced with the tongue in a position between that of E and U. So it's between the E and U and it becomes U. I also made a TikTok video specifically on this sound, uh, as in the word buhu, buhu, duck. Sounds like the word, the sound in the word push, uh, push, but it's not exactly the same. It's uh. And let's now look at some examples of the short versus long vowels. This grammar book does not provide examples, so I'm adding this just for extra so we can see them in use. First is the singular A or the short A versus the long A. That, that first word, ba'a, ba'a means high, to be high, up, up high, ba'a. But the lengthened A, ba'a, ba'a means water. Ba'a, ba'a. Hear the difference. Next, the word digua, digua which is a type of um, rodent, rat, I forget the exact one it's called, but it's a, it's a type of animal, digua, versus deep, deep. Hear the difference, digua, deep. Lengthened versus short. The oo sound, the left side is usu, usu, means he, she, or it, versus usapa, usapa, means always. Usu, usapa. Hear the difference. And then the U, short versus long, tukwibano or tukwibanu means a drumstick. That U there is short, tukwibanu, versus tukwi, tukwi. Hear the difference. Now, the short O versus the long O, they do have examples provided in the book. And it's important because in this writing system, they don't spell the word or this sound differently. In the previous examples, they do. The letters again, see how the, oops, see how the A short is one A, but long is doubled, two A's. Same with the E versus two E's. Or the double O for the U versus the triple O for the lengthened U sound, okay? But the O, there's no way of distinguishing whether it's short or long. So you just got to know the word. So the short O, this first example in the word for with him is ono, ono, versus the long O, ono, ono. 
o no, with him, o no, then, hear the difference. The next example, toga, toga means night, or togano, togano, versus toga, toga means pine nut bird. Third example, totawaga, on the left, totawaga, short o versus the long o, totawaga, totawaga, hear the difference. Finally, the word for bone, short, oho, oho, versus oho, oho means over there. The only way you'll know that which word it should be or which sound short or lengthened would be the context. When you're reading, when you're reading, the only way to know which one it is, short or long, is the context. Lastly, there are diphthongs in the Paiute language. In other words, two, basically two, two vowel sounds that are basically pronounced as one. So the a uh, e sound becomes ai, ai, and it's written with the letter i. I can also be pronounced a, as in the word kaiwa. Kaiwa means mountain. The a uh, u sound, au, au, is written o w as in the word kaupa, kaupa, which means leg. And finally, the o-e sound becomes oi, oi, written o-e, as in the word koipa, koipa, which means like a, a longhorn or a horned sheep. I forget what we call that in English. Horned sheep, longhorn sheep, mountain sheep, koipa, matnusapa. That is all. So those are all the sounds of this dialect. Other, other dialects have other sounds and we'll get into those as we progress through this series going through this grammar book. So again, knowing the sounds, how to pronounce these sounds is important for speaking the language. So I hope you continue learning with me. Have a good day. Bishaw Tabiwaga.